willing to carry that. So we've got to somehow cut. I'm going to have a look on the YouTube, see what other folk do. I can't remember the smallest mill slot cutter, uh, and then I can cut this down to size. Then that'll want drilling and tapping, and the uh, tool holder block will need cutting and tapping. Cutting and drilling, sorry. That'll so that'll go in well, but that'll be in effect, it'll be like that. But with that cut off and then tool be on top of there to get to my centre. So that's Drilling all the way through here. Well, right through that part because uh, that's going to be tapped M4 to take this cutter. That's an Allen screw. Um, right. I have a load of screws for holding inserts into holders. Uh, that being one of them, they're like a little Torx. Uh, and I thought, oh yeah, look, that's M4. Um, I'll I'll try and tap that for M4, but it ain't. They're M3.5, so that's no good because I ain't got an M3.5 tap. It's a little Allen screw, and all I've done is put it in the lathe and just taken a little bit off the edge. It's a countersunk uh, socket head, and I've just taken a bit off that, tried to chamfer it slightly so that it fits in there to get a central grip. So I'm going to drill and tap this. I'm doing it all the way through because eventually there's going to be a bolt coming up underneath here. Probably be bigger, it probably be an M5. Maybe even a 6. So I use my centre finder for this. Either. Right, that's the shape marked out. Ah, I'm just moving camera around because this is my phone. Uh, and somebody said to me, if you just tap screen, right at the center of whatever it is you want to keep in focus it won't concentrate on anything else and I'm moving camera around and sure enough it's keeping that in focus Very cool. three millimeter so I'm going to have a go chewing it out with that I'll come back when I've got somewhere near. slot 4.3 deep there and there now I need to rotate the piece and cut that one and that one and hopefully my insert will drop in yep just need to turn the work now I'll uh, I'll cut one and on my last one I'll come back A bit ugly and a bit out of shape, need to do some filing. But basically, it's not perfect, but it ain't bad.
Right, so progress tonight so far is we've made the little post that's M4 holding that in, the towel, uh, and that's M5 underneath that's going to be drilled into here and fixed from underneath with a count of some Callum screw. That on the centre, hang on. Try that centering thing again. Here we go. So we've got that tip bang on. So yeah, this is the um, shaft that's going to go up through these bearings to uh, support them and fasten into the bottom of the ball turning uh, body. Uh, last night. I turned down that end of this piece of steel that I had and I got near the dimension where there would have been a good press fit in there uh, and I cocked up I just thought yeah I just need another thou off there uh, and stupidly went in with the cross slide a slight amount took another skim off uh, put it in and all we got was this rattling so I cocked up <clears throat> totally and I'm not one for wanting to use Loctite all the time. So uh, I've turned it round and I'm going to start again. Uh, and I am, I'm not cutting to the end because here I need to leave a little thin shoulder that sits on the bottom of that. But it only has to be very shallow and then the shaft will come up through there. So I need a right small shoulder. So I'm leaving that unfinished and I'll work on that last. So I need to get this down to nearly that size, uh, which is the wrong size. And when I get near it, I'll see where I am. <clears throat> There's enough room for two bearings on there. So there ain't a problem. Because that end's going to have a thin shank on it and a, a taps. Uh, no, it's going to have a six milli stud sticking out. Or part of this will be made to be a six milli uh, thread. I'm not going to screw a stud in. It, that, that's going to be made from this one piece. So that's the shaft. <clears throat> and as I said, that what's blued is slightly undersized. You can probably tell. That was the size I was aiming at. <clears throat> that's the bit. Uh, today, I've got some little slugs to make uh, to go on the cross slide, the locks. Um, this is sort of two slugs, magnetic, they want to be 20 mil long, they want to be 8 mil diameter. I want them made out of steel because they've been magnetic, because uh, they're going a, a longish hole and pulling them out is a nightmare. Whereas I've got a little screwdriver with a magnet attached to the end and you just slide that in and they pull out, so it'd be easier to do it a quick changeover so I'm gonna make those then the problem I've got is I haven't got any steel I've got loads of stainless I've got some brass and I've got aluminium but non-magnetic uh, so I'm using an old bolt it's just a long piece of thread from when I built my garage had some really really long coach bolts and I chopped them bits off the end and I kept them as the bits of threaded bar so I'm gonna turn those down hopefully to get the size I want these need to be uh, 20 mil, 20 mil long but then they need an angle grinding on the end to match the shape of the curvature of the bearing which I'll probably file by hand 
So I just need to cut two um, thickness of that, so I mean, uh, in that blade. 20 mil a couple of other slugs at 20 mil, that'll do. So that's the little slugs finished. You can see that's roughly where they go on a Super 7 cross slide uh, where the compound fits. Those slugs are at a different angle to the ones that are already in there. Uh, so what I've done is that I've just cut them. This, you saw that a few minutes ago. A uh, piece of threaded bar turned down and that's the angle I've just filed on them. Um, as I say, the reason I've used steel is because I've got little magnetic gubbins and they'll be easy to pull out. So that's that finished. I'll put it all together, make sure it uh, fits, uh, and trim this down. I think that's going to have to be cut down because I think it'll stick through uh, too far, I believe. I think it may stick through. That's there. Yeah, it does look. That's the first time I've tried that, it fits. Uh, yeah, that's going to need cutting down so it doesn't uh, foul the uh, little slider that goes in there. Somebody's shouting and bawling out there. for this. I only just got these and they come with a load of handles and all sorts but no bar for that. I need to get myself some. I'll have a look at that. If it's not enough I'll finish it off in the um, in vice by hand. No dialder. Truth. Stick it all together. So that's our collar that goes up through the bearings to fit a Myford Super 7 cross slide in place of the compound. That's the bottom bearing that goes down into the cross slide. It looks a bit scabby, but it, it is a brand new bearing. It's just that, uh, and it's a ZZ, it's a double cage one. It's just that um, my mate had them, and he's had them in the drawer for years. So we put that onto that. We've got 
a packing washer. The reason for that washer is because if I didn't put a washer in, that bearing outer cage would be pressed up against that bearing outer cage and they would be defeating the object. So that makes sure that the centre race is being pressed together like so. Then we have a nut, M6, sorry a washer, nut, I'm a nut, and we shall put that on. So they're now nipped together and we've got a lovely free rolling pair of bearings. That worked. We've got the two slugs there. A handle I've done, the little, uh, call it a cross slider, with a cutting tool on that I've set at an angle. Whether that works out or not, I don't know. And it does need nipping up tight there. If I've got a failure point here, it's probably going to be that. Because everyone I've seen that people have made the machine this out of one piece, or they've made a heavy one. Steve Jordan did one, and he made this a lot heavier. Uh, and he put a, a, a bolt in the back and this sleeve dropped through it and then a big pinch bolt on the back That's not how that works and that really might be the failure point. It might pull round I'll, I'll nip it as tight as I can get it, but it's on an M5 So that could be a weak link. I don't know When I train it out so best thing to do I guess is to Go to the, the lathe and put this on, but there's the compound already on. So to give an idea of time, of how long it takes to fit this, I'll do a complete strip. I'll move the camera, I'll make sure it's all nipped up, so I've got to undo it, take, that, take out the slugs, put the new slugs in, put the new cutter in, uh, and assemble it all together, and we'll see. How long it takes. Right, so that's my uh, compound. Quick change tool holder. Shall undo the grub screws, the uh, nipping screws, turn the compound and remove the screws. Magnet, slug one, slug two, compound off. Two new slugs, they want to be that angle. One in there, one in there, one ball turning device, stuck down onto there, get a wind, make sure it do not catch, it doesn't, wind these in carefully to give equal pressure. I can see it moving. One ball turning device fitted. So on it. set installed obviously that one's adjusted
sure I'm going to hit that centre before I hit the centre on this piece. Right, where's my little Uh, the motor's not covered up very well. I need to move this swarf guard. I need to make a proper swarf guard. Like how else you do something temporary and it ends up being temporary and never gets changed. It's probably what's wrong here. We'll, uh, we'll just let it cool a bit. So far though, I'm quite happy with results. Yeah, it is. It's very, very hot, is that? In fact... on your mandrel and then uh, face it off, which I didn't do. I just mounted a chunk of aluminium. It's, it's like a bit like cast iron. Whereas aluminium is a friggin' nightmare. As you can see, it's all over me, there's more of me than on the bloody floor. Now I'll knock off for a while and then uh, see if I can sort this out, cool it down and do it again. <laughs> 